Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. New week, new theme. This week's theme is a little different though. It's just called Random Rumble. I asked my patrons just to send me whatever the song they wanted me to. No requirements for a specific theme or anything like that. I'm just going to check out five songs this week without much of a thematic thread between them. We're going to kick it off with a band called Midori. The person requested it gave me a live track to look at. Uh, the song is called Yukiko-san. And I think we've only ever checked out Midori on live stream, but I vaguely remember enjoying them. And I double checked they are in my list of interesting things I heard on live stream, which is admittedly a pretty big list at this point. Let's dive in and see what Midori is bringing to the table today. Okay. Okay. Walking bass line with the same rhythm as the snare on the drums. Piano and vocals having a similar rhythm. like the most random guitar notes. Very noisy. <laughs> like the smallest voice ever now. There's just so much energy in this. This is ridiculous. Now, the production in that was not fantastic. I have also been advised, if I want to spend some time with the studio version, to do so. I probably will, but I'm going to hold that off until after I've given my initial thoughts on this. So probably right before we do lyrics, I will pause the camera, check out the studio, come back with some information about that, and then pause again to check out the lyrics for this. What I heard from this, though, is noise a lot of it <laughs> um i mean that whole chorus the entire intro to the song is noise harmonic uh timbre wise we have a very distorted gnarly guitar 
Uh, we have an organ-esque sound on the keyboard. The drums are all over the place. Uh, the notes that we are getting from the guitar and the bass and the keyboard in this section is just harmonically dissonant. There's so much clashing sounds here. And then on top of that, the vocals are, sounds to me like an alternating harsh vocal between the lead singer and possibly the pianist. I only say that because I couldn't see who was doing the second vocals to call and response there. Well, the response part of the call and response. But I did see that they did the harsh wrapped part of the verse. So they had a harsh vocal that certainly could have been utilized there. Um, but I mean, the only thing that really makes a lot of sense to me is the rhythmic element in this part, which the drums have a very punky style, uh, with heavy emphasis of syncopated bass kicks against, uh, static, uh, snare accent points. Um, and then of course the rhythmic element in the vocals, ba, 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 that sort of, um, yeah, I guess two beats each with the harshes going back and forth. Everything else is just chaotic noise, which is interesting because it's massively juxtaposed in the other parts of the song or in the pre-chorus is very light. Um, it's what we heard in the... Uh, well, it was the bridge, the vocal part to the bridge right before he ramped it up to the end. But it's the part where I mentioned that the piano rhythm and kind of the melody was also m matching the clean vocals from the lead vocalist. Um, her vocals are pulled a bit down, so I really had to hear the melody here. But it is a bit of a tighter melody, not really a lot of movement to it, kind of sitting around a single home note, not really di di you know, diving too far in any direction. A really tight melody there, um, a walking bass line, lighter drums, and the piano just kind of giving us these chords in that same rhythmic pattern that the vocalist has given us. It is a massive change of pace, but even when we look at the verse, it is just drums, very light, uh, with the bass walking, no guitar, no piano, and then the uh, those really fast wrapped, can we call it? Harsh vocals. It is about building a, a, a section of the song with a ton of space unutilized so that when we do move to the chorus and we fill up everything in a wall of sound, it feels even punchier. And that is what the song excels at, honestly, is this atmosphere of giving us this room, this space of kind of emptying out the area and saying, look, this is just the baseline here, foundational aspects, nothing else going on here. And then we're going to fill everything up more than you thought we even had room for. There's just going to be so much sound here and it's not going to be positive in any way it's, it's not going to have positive harmony the things are you know the individual elements aren't going to play nicely with each other um the moving ideas aren't going to have anything to do with each other it is going to be loud chaotic wall of sound and uh you're just gonna have to deal with it <laughs> but it works really well because of that back and forth now, noise rock, a little bit of post-hardcore, those are my initial thoughts here as far as composition, what kind of genre we're playing within. But what I found really interesting is more of the jazzy element that shines through in this. I don't know if it's the chords on the keyboard at times, um, or if it's the drum work, which is kind of punky, but on the lighter verse sections, it does kind of have a jazzier, I think it's a swung jazzy vibe to it. It certainly isn't drums that I think you would hear in jazz too often, <laughs> but it has a jazzy feel to it. And then, of course, we have the upright bass, which is, it's a popular instrument in jazz groups, not too popular in rock groups. That kind of comes out of nowhere. Um... But yeah, so like there's some jazzy elements here. Nothing that I would I would ever want to cross the genre. I've never classified this as like jazz rock or something like that. It's only ever a hint, a little 
a little sparkle of it tossed in just to spice things up a little bit never really dominates any of the the song itself but it is interesting how often it pops up in how many different ways there's there's just a consistency in it no matter what we're doing how hard we are rocking there's an element that i've oh that right there it's a little tiny five percent of this section it's kind of jazz inspired isn't it and it's such a bizarre thing to hear in, in such a loud noisy chaotic track Now, there's also the odd elements here, and it, it certainly, I think, adds to the general idea of contrast, which I think is what the song is really going for at its heart. But right in the bridge, the first thing we hear in the bridge, uh, vocal-wise, are these really tiny, cutesy vocals. Such a contrast from everything else we've heard, even the chorus or the pre-chorus with the clean vocals still came off as very full bodied, uh, warmer and more singy. Whereas these come off as very sing songy. If that distinction of words makes any sense to you, um, they're, they're just smaller, higher pitched, almost squeaky. They're designed to cut through a lot of lower end sound yet there is none here. It's a very interesting choice to um, to go in this direction. And, you know, I think in any other song, I'd be like, this makes no sense. It, what, what is it doing here? But my first reaction to it is, well, that's unexpected. And that's sort of how this song operates in all ways. To build something and then do the exact opposite for dramatic effect. And cutting the song out to practically nothing and changing the vocals to those is certainly unexpected and dramatically different from anything else we had heard up to that point. Even undercutting the already dynamic back and forth we have between the very empty spacious verse and the very full and driving wall of sound in the chorus. They're finding yet another way to add diversity to the overall sound of the song. Very impressive. Um, but the other unexpected thing, I think it's during the two verses under the rapt harsh uh, vocals, is the guitar playing. It is just these single or sets of two notes without much of a sense of rhythm or melody. And they're just notes, so they're not really giving us harmonic information. It, it sort of just feels like the guitarist is bored, and since she's not singing, she might as well be doing something. And it's just like, bink, bink, bonk, bink. And it's just like these random <laughs> guitar notes that have nothing to do with the song. And yet again, it's another thing where I'm like, in any other song, I just immediately call it out. This is just weird stuff it's obtuse it doesn't make any sense but in here that's that's just how the song operates at every moment of the song i'm hearing something that kind of doesn't really make sense and because there's so much thing so many things that don't really make sense it kind of creates their own rules and by the end of the song it it winds up being anything goes and now everything fits because nothing makes sense nothing really fits so it all makes sense and it all fits and, you know, that's just a wild way to go about making music, but there's nothing wrong with it. And I think they do a fantastic job of employing that element of the unexpected in their music. Um, I don't think there's anything else I wanted to touch on. I'm going to go check out the studio version and kind of get an ear for some of the stuff I might have missed in the compression of this live version. And then we'll do some lyrics. Alright, after listening to the studio version, there really isn't that much of a difference. Uh, there's a little bit more of a clarity on the high end, but otherwise I think they did a fantastic job of showcasing the song in a live setting. They did a great job of replicating it and bringing even more intensity and energy to the performance. However, one thing I did listen to, and if you enjoyed that, I highly recommend finding the studio version to listen to, either on YouTube or your streaming platform of choice, is that having more clarity and definition in the higher end allows you to hear some of the 
interesting wild counterplay between the piano and the guitar. Mostly in the pre-chorus, but it also shows up quite a bit in the bridge as well. And it's uh it's kind of wild because the guitar is primarily focused on texture. I don't even think that they're playing consonant harmonies, consonant chords. They're just sort of playing notes on the guitar. Um, it's really about creating that sound, that atmosphere, the texture, the, the grit and compression of the, the electric guitar. Whereas the piano does go for some textural dissonant things at times, but also has some legitimate melodies that are at play. And it's really interesting to listen to the rhythmic interplay between the two, while they're also showcasing two sides of the coin that is this song, where one is melodic and one is textural, happening at the same time and creating this duality in the song itself. I think this is most clearly heard in the bridge when the piano begins to play a very jazzy melody, uh, harmonically and rhythmically. And it's just, it's a wild duality in this track. And I, I absolutely recommend checking that out if you enjoyed what you listened to here. I, I don't think it's going to drastically change anyone's mind. If you didn't like this, the studio version's not too terribly different. Um, but it is, it is really interesting to hear how those two instruments are kind of at odds with each other, doing two very different things in the same general area of being in the spotlight. Now, lyrically, this is sort of all over the place. There is metaphor everywhere, metaphor upon metaphor upon metaphor. But it seems to be about disliking the present and running away to a future, any future, just anything has to be better than this. The chorus, the yelled part between the two vocalists just continuously says destroy over and over and over. I think it's very much about destroying the way that things are now. In fact, our first verse opens with a similar idea. It says all the various stains on the pure white, throw them away and sob. Love is dark, but the tension is fantastic. It's, I don't know, man, it's, it speaks a little bit to that idea. Just throw everything away, right? Things have been tainted, get rid of them. Cry about it and move on, right? Let me get the pre-chorus though. It says, run away as if you're disappearing and go beyond the present when you've made up your mind, lovely Yukiko. And then we go to the chorus, which just says destroy over and over and over. Now, verse two, verse two is a bit more on the nose. It says, eat the painful present. You don't know why? Who cares? Most humans are beyond our imagination. That final line can mean a lot of things, but I believe it's a way of separating everything outside of oneself in order to make decisions that work best for you, possibly uh, assuming that this uh, Yukiko person is a real person or at least a, a character. Because honestly, we don't have a lot of things in here that I think we could ascribe characteristics to it. We simply have this name thrown at us. Um, but if they are a person, real or fictitious, and my the, what what I get out of this is that this person has a tough time doing anything for themselves. They're they're such a people pleaser that everything they do is for somebody else, trying to make everybody else happy, and it makes them miserable. And the song is saying you just need to get rid of everything about yourself right now, move on, find something different. The bridge, though. Very different. It's just repeating back and forth, cutie, honey, cutie, honey, cutie, honey. And I have no idea what this is supposed to be about. Um, we do have the concept of love show up twice. The pre-chorus at the very end is a bit of a change from early pre-choruses and says tear off love. But of course we saw earlier in verse one that love is dark. So the cutie and honey, I typically see those as, um, as like pet names for people you're in a relationship with, uh, or just like, uh, 
uh, something like that, right? So that kind of brings in this concept of being in a relationship with someone, introducing love into it as well. But I, I just don't see how it works with everything else. But uh, we end the song with um, tear off your love and look back on the past. Stop crying and just destroy. Run like you're disappearing. Go beyond the present when you made up your mind. Lovely Yukiko-san. So, I don't get all of it. But I do think that that is my general gist here, is that we have somebody who is just not happy with life, and so our narrator is telling them, hey, just discard everything. Get rid of all the ties you have, go start somewhere new, and do it right this time. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, the energy of the song fits that really really well. It is chaotic and all over the place and very destructive sonically. So yeah, I actually it makes more sense than ever that the chorus is the wall of sound, dissonance, chaotic harmonic element because it is where they are literally just screaming destroy and they're giving us the most destroyed harmonic sound ever. I mean, all the sonic destruction in the guitar tones even, the distortion and uh, the overdrive and all that that goes into your crunchy guitar sound is about destroying that initial sound, the, in the initial audio signal, and creating something gnarly and, and disgruntled out of it. So yeah, there's a lot of things that go in there that really allow the chorus to line up and be this, this singular vision of destruction, lyrically, musically, sonically, all of it. Really well done. Those are my thoughts on Midori's Yukiko-san. What did you think of this track? Is there anything that stood out to you? Anything that you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Maybe you just have your own thoughts, opinions, and perspectives about this track. Let me know down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, that uh, wraps it up for this one. We do have a special selection coming up next. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. As usual, we're going to continue on with this week's theme. Until next time, remember to be critical and not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.